Thank you again, Pastor. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ma, for this opportunity. I just want to say a word or two concerning the teaching of Pastor Jeff. Please go back and listen to what he said again. Hallelujah. I want you to go back and take the time. Listen to what he's taught. Everything, even before I arrived, listen to it again. And then connect to what he shared yesterday. It's a very profound truth. He brought understanding and clarity to this subject of giving. It's very, very important. Hallelujah. It's my considered opinion that I think there are about two or three issues as far as giving is concerned with the body of Christ. Number one, he got it accurately. He said, a swing to one side. And so the, um, the other sides that make the equation complete were ignored, either as a result of ignorance or just being victims of self. Hallelujah. So there's need to bring the other aspects that make the whole equation of wealth and abundance complete. And then number two, the motif of the heart. The motif of the heart. It is true. I hope you know that the prodigal son started with prosperity. He didn't start with poverty. So it was the prodigal son was not looking for money. He already had what many people were looking for. But something about the state of his heart depleted him until he got back again. And pastor shared something very touching uh, about an agenda from hell to cripple the church. It's not a lie. Oh. It's true. Believe it. It's not a lie. Hunger always takes Israel to Egypt. There is only one reason. Genesis 42, 1 and 2. Jacob was a prophet, but he was hungry. And he became ineffective. He said, I have learned that there is corn in Egypt. Corn is good, but the location is where the problem is. But being that there's no other place that has corn, he says, why do we look at one another? Verse 2. He says, get thee down there and buy for us so that we may live and not die. Even a prophet without corn will die. That's how the nation of Israel got to Egypt until they became slaves. Every time Satan sees the liberty of the saints, he will manipulate the economy so that corn is always found and only found in Egypt. And even if you are the son of a prophet, hunger, not an attack, not a deception, hunger can take you willingly to Egypt until you become a slave. So I'm praying that God will help us to really understand this. Make up your mind as a goal to not be poor. Honestly, pastor said it right. Uh, money is not everything, but many things depend on money. And it is foolish to ignore it. You will pay a price, a very bitter price. If God helps you to solve this money problem once and for all, I tell you, over 70% of your life will be efficient. Money protects integrity. Money protects character. Are we together? Your integrity is protected when you have resources. The Bible says the borrower is slave to the lender. You see that now? It's true. The rich will always rule over the poor. And then, of course, like he said, if you are a poor wise man, your voice will not be heard. Praise the name of the Lord. And so we thank God for this word. Go and listen to it because I submit to you, Pastor, the challenge of most believers is financial. You can cast a demon with one prophetic word. Go. Jesus said, go and a legion left. But this issue of finance, you see, do you know that Gadara was not angry that the demons left? They were angry that they lost money. That was why they drove Jesus back. You do your deliverance provided it does not touch money issues. As soon as the swine fell and it affected them, they said, no, you have to go out of here. Satan has an intentional agenda to cripple the work of God. And that happens through finances. And whilst there are all kinds of wrong teachings, unfortunately, founded on greed, this is where the problem is, founded on greed, because of hunger, lack of consecration, people are now manipulated into all kinds of things. Very ugly sight. I know God is cleaning up his body. 
But if we make a mistake and throw away the revelation of giving, giving does not only bring finances, it truly is how people live. The plants and the animals, the ecosystem should teach us that this is how it works. So by the time you do not have the mentality of a giver, even if Satan does not exist, he will still fail. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Pastor, thank you for bringing that great word. Let's honor the man of God again. In Jesus' name. What's the one thing holding you back from living the life God has called you to? I bet it's fear. Fear that whispers, you're not enough, you can't do it, you'll fail. But what if I told you, God never intended for you to live in fear? In fact, he has given you everything you need to overcome it. Today, we're going to talk about how to break free from the chains of fear and walk in the boldness that God has already placed inside of you. And it all starts with one thing, faith. Let's dive in. Fear is something we all face. It can be paralyzing, overwhelming, and even make us doubt God's promises. But here's what we need to understand. Fear is not from God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let that sink in for a moment. Fear is not your identity. Power, love, and a sound mind are. Fear doesn't get the final say in your life. God's power does. I know some of you are watching this right now feeling like fear has gripped every area of your life. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. But here's the good news. Jesus is greater than your fear. When you feel anxious or afraid, you're not meant to carry that weight alone. In fact, Jesus invites us in. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Fear can weigh you down. It can make you feel like you're carrying a burden too heavy to bear. But God is saying, come to me. Give that fear to me and I'll give you peace. When you put your trust in God, you start to realize that he's bigger than your fears. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 reminds us, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is literally promising that you don't have to do it alone. He's holding you up, even when the fear feels overwhelming. What if, instead of focusing on your fears, you started focusing on God's promises? Practical Steps to Overcome Fear So, how do we practically overcome fear in our daily lives? Here are three key steps. Number one, meditate on God's Word. The Bible is full of promises that combat fear. One of my favorites is Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Read scriptures like this daily. Remind yourself of God's truth, and fear will lose its grip on your heart. Number two, pray boldly. Prayer is not just asking God for things. It's an exchange. When you come to God in prayer, give him your fear and receive his peace. Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 to 7 tells us, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Number 3. Take action in faith. Fear tries to freeze you in place, but faith moves you forward. Whatever God is calling you to do, do it despite the fear. That's where real courage comes from. Not the absence of fear, but moving forward through it with the strength of God by your side. In conclusion, listen, I don't know what fears you're facing right now, but I do know this. God has already given you the power to overcome them. You don't have to live in fear anymore. You can live boldly, confidently, and courageously because God is with you. Remember Romans chapter 8, verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? So, don't let fear have the final word in your life. Instead, let faith rise up. Let God's promises lead the way. If this message has touched you, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with someone who needs to hear it. 
and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content that will strengthen your walk with Christ. Let's break free from fear together.